Would you believe me if I told you that all it took to generate this workflow was a very short Claude prompt? How about this one? In this video, I'm going to show you how you can set up an MCP server for Claude that supercharges its NAN workflow generating abilities. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'll share some tips on how to best prompt Claude in order to get the results as good and as close to a finished product as possible. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how you can set everything up and do that. This MCP server is available on github.com and I'm going to provide the uh, URL in the description and a huge thanks to the developer for making something as awesome as this. So uh, let's go ahead and see what makes this special. So the NADN MCP uh, actually has access to 528 NADN nodes. Um, it has coverage of all the node properties and what, what those properties should be, uh, what those operations should be, 90% coverage of the uh, official NADN documentation, and uh, 263 AI capable nodes detected with full documentation. So this really is the full Monty here. Instead of Claude or OpenAI or any other um, LLM really guessing what the JSON should be for any workflow, uh, this MCP actually gives almost all of the context required to create the uh, proper JSON for outputting an NADN workflow. And if we dive into NADN and just see any of the workflows that I have over here, for example, this invoice categorizer that I made, uh, you'll see that while the um, visually this entire workflow is one node connected to another, connected to another, connected to another, what's really going on under the hood is that this is simply JSON. So if we went ahead and downloaded this, I'm just going to go ahead and open this file with a text editor and you'll see that essentially all of this is just JSON, right? And this JSON is translated into the visual nodes that you are seeing on the NID and workflow. And you can see that it's fairly complex JSON. So that's why um, it can get really easy for an LLM to really start hallucinating or to make things up when it doesn't understand what it has to fill in. And that is what makes this MCP so incredibly powerful that it fills in those gaps for the LLM so that the output that you get is um, a complex and more importantly, a fully working workflow. So uh, let's go ahead and see how you can set this up. Now this MCP will work with uh, Claude. It'll work with Cursor. Um, you'll need to be on the pro plan for Claude for in, order, in order for this to work. But really honestly, it's 20 bucks a month. And if you are getting um, almost one click fully operational NAD and workflows, the 20 bucks a month is more than worth it. So let's go ahead and see how you can install this. You need to install this on your local system because you're going to set this up with Claude Desktop. And what Claude Desktop is going to do is it's going to uh, communicate with the MCP files on your local system um, and as it uh, generates the workflows. So first off, you need to have node.js installed on your system. I already have it. If you don't have it, you can just go ahead to node.js.org um, and install it. I've already installed it, so I'm just going to ignore this step. It's going to go back, and all we need to do is go into the terminal and run this command. So I'm just going to go hit copy, open the terminal, npx n8n.mcp. And you'll see that it start, uh, it, it'll start installing do you want to install the following packages? Okay, to proceed, yes. And this is wait a few seconds uh, for the MC3 server to in be installed. Now this is being installed on your local machine, so you need to do it on the local machine itself. You can't do it from the web yet, um, but if there is an update on the MCP server where it is now web compatible, I'll definitely make another video about that. All right, perfect. So the MCP server is running on STDIO transport. Perfect. So now that we have this process running in the terminal, let's go back out and we need to add um, this bit of information to our plot config file. Now this is just the basic configuration, which is only the documentation tools. This is with the N8N management tools as well, which means 
this can actually directly make the workflow and push it to your N8N instance. So let me show you how we can set that up. So to add the configuration, let's go ahead and hit copy over here. Let's pop over to Claude and in Claude, go to file, uh, sorry, go to Claude, go to settings and then go to developer, edit config and that'll open this file over here. So let's go ahead and drop that into a text editor and open it up and we can go ahead and add a um, and copy this code in here i think we've made one mistake and the mistake that i've made is i have not updated the api url or the api key so let me open the text editor one more time open recent and my n8n instance here is n8n dot how do i automate this dot com so to get your api key in N8N, click the little three dots next to your name, go to settings, N8N API, create an API key, or test. Just gonna let it expire in seven days because I'm just testing for now. Copy, done. Well, let's go back in here and replace the API key. And let's reopen Claude and hopefully we should now have access to uh, the MCP server. So let's go ahead and hit open cloud. Go back into settings and just make sure that we can see that under developer. And you'll see that we do have indeed N8N MCP installed. Wow, this is exciting. If we go back into GitHub, we'll see that they have uh, recommendations for using cloud projects. Um, and we can add these enhanced system instructions where we're giving it um, a lot more context and a lot more information as to how it should use the different tools available in the MCP. Otherwise, what LLMs tend to do is they kind of mess up the order. So they may use uh, a tool that should have been used later on earlier, but these instructions will make sure that the uh, MCP tools are used in the right order. So let's go ahead and just grab this entire thing, go back into Claude, and go to Projects, and let's start a new project. N8N workflow generation automatically generate N8N workflows, create project. And let's go ahead and click on set project instructions, paste all of that in, save the instructions, and let's start running this and see what it can come up with. So once I had everything set up, it's time to, it was time to open up Claude and actually uh, try and generate some workflows. So I'll admit it was not quite as easy as I had anticipated. Uh, my first couple of workflows happened to fail. Um, either the uh, workflow output wasn't quite what I expected, or sometimes Claude still did end up generating uh, workflows that I was not able to correctly import into N8N. So after a lot of trial and error and spending way more time on this than I had originally expected, I finally figured out how uh, to best prompt Claude in order to get the workflows going. So before I get into that, let me go ahead and show you two workflows that I did successfully generate, which you saw at the beginning of the video. So the first one is a cold email automation workflow. So here is my prompt. And then if, if I scroll down, you'll see that uh, Claude is actually thinking aloud. And I was using Sonnet 4 here. I haven't, I, I used Opus in the next one. So uh, we'll get to that as well. So as it starts analyzing and thinking about what to do, it uh, makes calls to the MCP server and it figures out, uh, you know, what, what tools it needs. Uh, then it uh, breaks everything down. It searches for the nodes that it will require to, uh, to generate the workflow. And then it keeps going down. It, it finds the uh, requisite properties for those nodes and then it maps out the entire workflow, uh, outputs the nodes again, um, and uh, it gives some questions as well. So there is a little bit of back and forth involved. It's not really um, a one-click automation, but that's actually good because if you find that Claude is veering off direction, then this is a good opportunity for you to kind of, uh, you know, bring it back on track. I was pretty satisfied with the suggestions uh, for this demo, so I just went ahead and said good, and then it started building out the entire workflow and it created an artifact in which it actually generated the code and all of that JSON live. 
And then it took quite a while. Once all of the code was done, it actually went ahead and validated the entire workflow. And that's really what makes this MCP so much more powerful is that it's not just making up the code, it's actually reading the code and validating it against the uh, database in the MCP uh, to make sure that whatever code it has written is uh, complete. Even then, it's not perfect. Um, it, it'll work maybe two out of three times, but still two out of three times is better than spending five to 10 hours on a workflow by yourself. Claude can take care of this in 10, 15 minutes tops. So by the end of it, that was the entire cold email workflow complete. And you can see that it actually used up so many tokens that um, the final part of the workflow actually got cut off. And I had to hit continue for the rest of the workflow to kind of uh, finish outputting. And uh, it also gives you pretty detailed documentation for the workflow as well, which is pretty cool. So with all of that done, I still ran into an error importing the workflow. So I just pasted the error into Claude. So it validated the entire workflow again from start to finish. And uh, the resulting artifact that I had, I was able to successfully copy and paste into N8N. And here is what I got. So it's, it's pretty decent. Um, it, it does save time. It's, it, it does map out most of the stuff that you would have had to do manually. But this is not production ready. You'll still have to go back. You'll still have to test it a few times. And you'll still need to uh, swap out some of the nodes. For example, um, this wait for angle selection should actually be a human in the loop node where it actually asks the user for email angles, gets a response, and then and then proceeds. But instead, what, uh, what Claude did is just added a wait for angle selection node. But on the whole, it's um, for a starting framework. This is pretty decent. Now let me go ahead and show you the other one that I made. Let's go back into Claude, go back into projects, and let's see the competitor analysis workflow. So scroll up. This time I was using Claude Opus. So here is the prompt. It read the documentation. It searched for the nodes that it needed. Got the node essentials, which is the properties of the nodes. It made the architecture and then, um, you know, continued pinging the MCP server just to make sure it was doing everything correctly. And then finally drafted the artifact and validated the workflow. But uh, it still ended up losing so many credits. And since I'm not on the Pro Max plan, I'm just on the regular Pro plan that I actually hit the uh, limit before the validation was complete. But because I was using Opus, um, all I did was I just grabbed what was in the artifact and I pasted it in. And I ended up with this, which is still pretty decent. It's more or less a complete workflow where it uh, grabs a competitor's URL, uh, researches uh, the competitor, uh, gets their reviews, and then combines both of those things into like a competitor research report. So all in all, saved at least three to four hours of work. I'm pretty happy with the result. And now, as promised, let me go ahead and show you um, how I've been prompting plot to kind of get the best results. For this competitor analysis workflow, if you see the, if you see the prompt that I have, um, I am telling you to build me a competitor analysis workflow. And then I'm kind of breaking it step by step for how I expect this workflow to play out. So I provide the URL for their business. Then I expect the workflow to use perplexity to get in-depth information, read Google reviews, use Appify to find social media presence, and analyze effectiveness with OpenAI, and then use OpenAI to draft a competitor report with overview, strengths, weaknesses, and opportunities. So I found that giving a bit of step-by-step -step context to Claude helps it uh, generate a more complete workflow. In my earlier testing, I just tried to input stuff like build me a competitor analysis workflow and nothing else. And plot kind of got lost with what services it would use or what services it didn't use. And the result was kind of messed up. So I found that giving it a little bit of context and even suggesting some tools will help in generating a better workflow. And I'll show you another example with the other workflow that I made, which is this cold email automation one. If I scroll all the way up, you'll see that build and publish a cold email automation. And the same thing, I'm just giving it the steps one after another for what I expect the workflow to do. And then Claude takes its time. It puts everything together and, and strings it all up into a uh, an 80% complete workflow. So while this is far from perfect, 
if you can get the prompts right, it can really save you a lot of time, especially in the research and development phase. Uh, and then obviously the last 20% is something that you would need to complete by yourself, which you can see here that some of the nodes are still a, a little incomplete. Um, there are some nodes where instead of using a code node, you might prefer using something else. You may want to change how the data passes from one node to another. But overall, it's a pretty good skeleton to start working on. And as this MCP server is updated and it gets better and better, and as uh, Claude gets better and better, I can only imagine that the uh, I can only imagine that making NADN workflows and indeed making any kind of workflows is just going to be easier and easier as time goes by. If you enjoyed this tutorial, I'd really appreciate it if you could give this video a like. And do remember to subscribe to the channel for more AI and automation content. And if you want to hire me for building out automations for your business or professional processes, just go ahead and click on the link in the description and we can chat.